Hello everyone, this is Dr. Hisham Baham back again. So we continue our uh, series of lectures and then uh, about the city type of planning. And uh, today we're going to talk about the concept and aim. So what is the concept of measurements? As you can see here, this is the anatomy of the aortic valve complex and its implications of the trans uh, catheter implantation of the aortic valve. Let's take a look step by step. So what you can see here, this is the aorta and it's embedded into the LV. And as you can see here, this is the anatomical ventricular ar arterial junction over here. And this is the aortic leaflet. So as you can see, the aortic leaflet is not attached to a fibrous skeleton in the LVOT. It's adjusted, uh, it's attached directly to the LVOT muscular and as you cannot see any line of cleavage between the aorta itself and the LV and as you can see this is a, a diagram on the right side this is a diagram of the aortic complex so the ring down here that you can see is the junction between the three nadirs which is the bottom of the leaflet the three nadirs that they are if you did this ring then this will called uh, this will be called the virtual ring formed by the joining basal attachments of the aortic valve leaflets and this is a, a cadaveric opening of the aortic valve this is an uh, uh, opening of the aortic valve showing this the aortic valve is opened as, as you can see the ring as we opened it showing the connection between the nadirs of the three cusps. This is a very important concept to know that there is no line of cleavage at the aorta. There is no fibrous tissue. So that's the importance of knowing what is the nadir of each of the cusps. Where is the bottom of each of the cusps? So when you plan to implant your uh, prosthesis, your valve, it has to be down this virtual ring. And further, we're going to discuss how to acknowledge and how to know this virtual ring from the city and how to implement this imagination on the cath lab. So what about the mitral valve? The mitral valve is different than that of the aorta. At the mitral valve, you can see the discrimination between the muscle and the fibrous tissue at the annulus, the true annulus of the mitral valve. So this is the true difference between the mitral and the aorta. So now, now we talk some practical. So how do we do the analysis? So there is two methods. One is a semi-automated platform using the three menu, which is the only one available commercially now. And all you have to, to do is to determine the bottom of the three leaflets, just to scroll and then uh, see the bottom. This is not going to be in the scope of our series. It's going to be uh, more manual. And then you have the platform will uh, automatically align the annulus and tell you where is the true annulus. Then we do the measurements upon this plane. So what about the other things? The other ones are the manual platforms. And these are the ones we're going to be trained upon because this is the one that you can acquire through your computer, whether it's a Mac or a Windows. And I will provide you with the links where you can download uh, those platforms. So they are namely Ozarks MD and there is an Ozarks Slide version. You can use it. You have the Horus and also you have the Radiant for the Windows. So those are the images for the three, uh, the four platforms that you can use. Uh, this is the three menu, which is going to be uh, the, uh, the semi-automated one, and those are the manual ones. Now we're going to talk about the image reconstruction. So the CT image acquisition results in isotropic, means the same. this is the same point in different views of three-dimensional image data allowing to double oblique reconstruction. So what you see is that the same line from different views. And this will tell you that this is accurate point alignation. The other thing is that you can get a volume render image acquisition like this uh, on the right. Then you can see um, here uh, the calcifications and here you can see the Toshuastis in a 3D model. And also a very important principle that you need to know is that the systole and the diastole of the annulus are different. So what we do our measurements, we do our measurements in the systole because it gives you a, measure, uh, a bigger measurements of the annulus. And this is what you need to do your measurements upon. So this is also 
proven by this image below. So this is the same patient. You can see the same classifications over here. And here is the systolic from the 0 to 40. Then it's here triggered as the 20%. As we discussed in the previous video, this is 20% of the RR interval. And here, this is the diastole, which is from the 40 to 100 percent of the cardiac cycle. So here it's at 60 percent of RR interval. And you can see here the perimeter, which is measured over here, is a 77.4 millimeters. However, on the other side, it's 72. So as you can tell, this proves that the, the areas, the measurements in the systole of the anus is bigger than that in the diastole. And this is why it's important to do our measurements in the systole. So what about the contouring? This is how this we're going to do in the step-by-step uh, -step approach while we're doing the analysis. But you need to know that uh, any uh, a polygon shape, this is how we do it. Uh, whenever you do the, um, a pencil freehand, then the pre your parameter will increase because there's an irregular line following path of the cursor. So your uh, fine movements will be uh, accounted for into the, um, the parameter. However, the closed polygon is the most accurate one, and this is the one that I use in order to get an accurate perimeter and an accurate area. So, we move on to the annular calcification and why they are important. Remember, this is all theoretical. We're going to do the step-by-step -step in a different video. However, you have to know that the annular calcification is extremely important in our assessments for the procedure. As you can see, we have a mild calcification, moderate calcification, and severe calcification. Why it is important? So the device landing zone comprises the valve cusps, aortic anus, and the LVOT. So this is the landing zone of the cusp, so uh, the landing zone of the valve. So the valve lands at this part of the annulus. So you need to know how uh, uh, the paravalvular leak regurgitation or paravalvular leak would happen. If the calcifications are severe at this landing point, then the percentage of uh, predictability of paravalvular leak is high. What about the increase of the risk of ion rupture? It's all, it also increases when uh, you have part of the calcification. We're going to uh, we have also a case of uh, um, a recorded one that we're going to show you uh, in the future. So basically, these are the classifications. So you get the mild, which is a single adherent, non-protruding focus of the calcification. And at this point, when you do the parameter, you include this into uh, the annulus. You don't care about uh, whether it's a one millimeter or uh, protruding in or outside. However, if you have uh, a severe one, like the single or multiple nodules of calcification protruding into the annular lumen, as you can see here, and or extending into the LVOT, then when we come here to get the perimeter, we get it into half because this will going to be a minimal displacement of this calcification. So you need to uh, imagine or visualize that your valve will not going to be smooth and uh, totally adherent to the calcification. However, it will displace it a little while. So also one of the important thing is that the AV block uh, and the need of pacemaker is relevant to the uh, 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 calcifications and we're going to discuss this later. So this is the main principles that I want to discuss. We only have to uh, start planning. So the most important thing as you know that we have to get to know where is the uh, correct nadir for each of the cusps, so obtaining a correct image orientation. So this is the perfect image that we're looking for, that the nadirs are aligned in one plane. So at the upper part, this is the right coronary cusp nadir. This is the non-coronary cusp nadir, which opposed to the interatrial septum. And this is the left coronary nadir, which opposed to the left main. And you can see uh, in different images. So as you can see, the red dot applies for the right coronary artery, as you can see here. And the green dot uh, uh, is in front of the left main, as you can see here. And the non-coronary cusp, which is the yellow one, there's no coronaries coming out from this cusp. And the second thing is that correctly measuring the angles using different methods, and this is only provided by the NPR. After we get the measurements, then we're going to get the, uh, the perfect size by seeing the charts for each of the valves. This um, is a measurement taken by one of the semi-automated ones, and there is two measurements that I need you to focus on. And those going to be calculated, we're going to calculate them in the manual because they are not there, which is the area-derived virtual diameter 
and the other one is the parameter derived virtual diameter so what it does is that it gets the area and the parameter after delineating the annulus and through the circular formula it gets into uh, um, uh, you, you divide and gets the drive diameter so the computer or what we do is that we imagine that the annulus is circular and from the area and the parameter we derive the mean diameter it's important in order to verify your measurements that you have taken and I will discuss this into the practical um, uh, lectures. So as summary, this is the uh, summary of recommendations. If you can post the video and take a screenshot of this in order to go it, uh, we discussed all the points here. So just take a screenshot in order to refer to it. This was done by the European Society of Cardiology. Last thing is the access route. So I'm not going to go into details, just to know that you have to uh, look for the degree of calcification, the presence of marker tortuosity of the iliac arteries, and the smallest nat native vessel diameter. Uh, most of the, the smallest one that we have is five millimeters, which is the uh, volute um, for the 26 and the 29. So this is a very important uh, also uh, uh, paper that was uh, published by Till Coeler in 2015. And it talks about that the uh, balloon expandable valve, the Edwards, the Ishis, they promoted that it's a 20, uh, 14th French sheath. However, it's a 14th French without mounting the valve inside the sheath. This is an E-sheath, it expands and it collapses again. However, the diameter was taken without the valve inside of the sheath. So when the valve was inside of the sheath, it went up to a 26 millimeter sapient. It went up to uh, uh, 4.2 millimeters more than the uh, when it's not expanded. So this is actually what you can see here is that the core valve, the Evolute R, is an 18 French sheath in 29. However, the same diameter of the 26 goes up to a 23 French. So you have to put this into your mind while uh, choosing the vascular axis in order to choose the perfect valve for your patient. Uh, this is the images that you can get with the uh, multi slice CT. We're going to step by step to get the vascular axis. Um, as we discussed the calcification, um, there is no more things that we're going to say. And finally, this is the charts that we're going to uh, get the measurements and upon which we're going to choose the valve that we're going to implant in our specific patients. Um, finally, I would like to uh, tell you my take home message. CT is a fundamental tool for the TAVI procedure. Planning is a cornerstone for your success. This is why you have to do it yourself. Proper training for CT analysis is the only way to accurate measurements. Never forget the extra cardiac findings mentioned in the report of your patients. Our colleagues in the radiology department are telling us very important extra cardiac findings that may change your management plan. So always make sure that you read the report and always write your measurements on a piece of paper. Take it with you to the cath lab so that you don't have to uh, try to depend on your memory in a dire situation. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, for the next time, we're going to be discussing uh, the practical ones. Stay posted. Thank you.